everybody, it's Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. If you want to have a priceless experience, then you'll stay tuned to Mega Powers Radio. And remember, everybody's got a price for the Million Dollar Man. <laughs> What's shaking, Mega Maniacs? It's Monday, August 24th, and we just concluded a three-day event long wrestling weekend that was absolutely insane that went down in Brooklyn. Lots of things that we had to talk about. Takeover, SummerSlam, and of course, the main reason we're here to talk tonight, Monday Night Raw. You have tuned in to the Mega Powers Radio Raw Post Show, the most interactive post-Raw experience available. And if this is your first time joining us, I'm going to tell you all the ways that you can get your voice to us and all the listeners out there about all those things that went down this weekend. But first, let me just take some time to promote some messages to you guys about how you can support the Raw Post Show here on Mega Powers Radio. The number one way is, of course, to head to Patreon at patreon.com slash megapowersradio for as little as $1. You can continue things going here so we can keep bringing you the Raw Post Show, the Day Span Show, the All Talk Show, and all other things ending in shows. And, of course, if you cannot do that... You can continue supporting us by joining us live every single Monday by tuning your browsers to megapowersradio.com and finding us on all the various archive means that we are on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, YouTube, pretty much anywhere podcasts are found. And while you're there, please leave us a rating, a review, anything you can, because believe it or not, those things actually do support us quite a bit in helping us climb the charts and helping new people find the show. And of course, if you know people that are interested in a show like this, you should probably invite them. The more people, the merrier. So if you have friends that are into wrestling and are looking for something extra to enjoy on a Monday night or maybe listen to while they're on their way to work or wherever they might want to listen to a podcast, invite them to listen to the Raw Post Show. All right. As I said, folks, this is the most interactive post-Raw experience available, and we want to hear everything you got to say out there. It's been a very, very controversial weekend, especially after SummerSlam, but even tonight's Raw, there's a lot of opinions flying over the place. We want to know all of what you got to say out there, so join us at any time during the show. Uh, The phone lines, which will be opening up around 1130 you could dial in and get yourself in line with the number of 760-512-7247. But if you're impatient you want to get things rolling, you can get into the chat room on Blog Talk Radio. Shoutouts to the folks who got here early. We got Ferris419, Grapple This Productions, Mark Swabby, and Wazili. Shoutouts to all you guys there. Thank you for joining us nice and early. I see a number of guests. If this is your first time joining us here. Register yourself at blogtalkradio.com so you can get yourself a cool little nickname, and I'll give you some shout-outs throughout the show here. Uh, if you don't like either of those means, there's still a number of ways to get involved, including Twitter, at Raw Post Show. If you send us a little pizza emoji on Twitter, uh, I might send you one back, or maybe a taco one. Tacos are good, too. And, of course, our Facebook group, The Mega Maniacs. Just search for us on there. You could drop posts in there. We'll be taking questions, comments, anything you guys got to say via all those means. Until then, though... Let's get the show started with the host here. My voice you've been hearing ranting on for the first bit here is the voice of Mike Payton, station director here at Mega Powers Radio. Joining me tonight is the usual host that I got on the Monday Night Raw post show. So if you joined us before, you should know them well. But if you don't, let me introduce him to you. First off, Drew White. It was also the Monday Night Delight, man. No, I didn't, I didn't give you that this week. No, I'm, I apologize. You, for you, you have to earn that. Maybe I'll call you at the end of the show, but you don't get it now. Mr. Steven Huego. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Tony Mango. Yo. Tried to give you all like blue pants introductions. Uh, so this has been a wild weekend guys wwe tried this very experimental thing where they had takeover on saturday night SummerSlam on sunday night and raw tonight all coming from the same building the barclay center in brooklyn new york what a place to do it because at the very least i gotta say the crowd has been interesting all three nights Uh, a lot of people were worried that by the time we got to monday 
things would be burnt out, the crowd wouldn't be into it, and everything would have been used up. I certainly don't think that was the case. I think this was a very noteworthy show. A lot of fun spots, some dreadful spots, but overall, a great show. But I want to know, as I always start the show off, asking you guys, what's the number one thing you took away from this episode of Raw? Wago, why don't you start us off that? The number one thing that I took away is... There were so many spots tonight which would have elevated SummerSlam to somewhat of a tolerable level. And I'm glad we got what we got tonight. It was an interesting Raw. It was definitely worth watching, but it just makes me outraged that the shit that we got the night prior could have been avoided somewhat. I mean, you've got well, you've got Sting's return, the Dudley Boys, the new Wyatt guy. You could have essentially done all three of those at the pay-per-view. Sure you can, but they've also built this mystique of the night after WrestleMania, and I thought this for a while, they're going to try to do something special with the night after SummerSlam, at the least for this three-day experiment that they're doing. Well, first they should try to do something special on the night of SummerSlam. (laughs) Well, we could have said that for WrestleMania 29 as well, but uh, Tony, as another man who was at WrestleMania 29, I'm sure you feel that pain, but what did you take away tonight? Oh, it's definitely calling back to WrestleMania 29. And it's funny because we almost got tickets to the SummerSlam. And if we would have oh. went and this would have happened again, we would have been, been duped been twice. Fucking pissed. <laughs> Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. <laughs> totally agree with Wego, though. The priorities that WWE had seemed to be more for TakeOver and Monday Night Raw than it was for SummerSlam. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It makes up for some parts of last night, but at the same time, doesn't make me like that show any better. So. Keep that in mind, mm. WWE. And Drew, I believe you're the last one here for this. Yeah, I'm just disappointed I didn't get to see the statue that they've been building up for the past week. So that's well, the thing. The well, you did. It was backstage. It looked terrible. Yeah, it looked, <laughs> looked <laughs> horrendous. <laughs> it looked like it was made out of chocolate. Uh, Melting the, the, chocolate because it had the lights on it. <laughs> the issue I have, like, like you know, they, they had, like, the lift in there, putting the stage, the thing onto the stage. How does no one, like, peek under there? Like, oh, yeah, there's... This guy who, you know, it's a stang. Well, because so. there's curtains and they know that they're privacy curtains. You ah. the privacy curtains or you lose your job. Fucking dude, these guys are geniuses. Well, anyway, so Sting jobs. is Sting is the one thing I took away from. It's uh, it's Stang. That's for damn sure. Stang! <laughs> well, this was the follow-up of SummerSlam, as I said. So there was a running theme that we had a lot of storylines coming out of SummerSlam, and we're going to spend a lot of time about that because, as I said, almost every single story out of SummerSlam is continuing. Woo! Shouldn't, shouldn't SummerSlam be, like, sort of a chapter note? Yes, you know, definitely. Like, it should add some finality to certain feuds, and it should uh, make new feuds. I don't know if we got that. No, we didn't at all. <laughs> I mean, what finality is the fucking Divas feud had? It's still as terrible as ever. In fact, they- No, we had them out there tonight. Yeah, but by saying what finality did it have at SummerSlam? Zero. None of these feuds. None, not even the minor the, ones. There's no okay. There's one match that happened last night that isn't continuing just the same as it was, and that was the tag team title match. But it does still look like primetime players are going to be involved in this, so not so much. I wouldn't even consider that. It, it depends if you consider what they're doing with the uh, World Heavyweight Championship with uh, Cena and Stain going forward. And, and uh, we know uh, Cena will get his rematch eventually, but uh, I mean that they they kind of change threw a uh, curveball at us, so that's a little new. Man, are they going to do Sting versus Seth Rollins at Night of Champions? I think that's probably their motive, and um, with John... I mean, it's, it's not a bad idea. Night of Champions is technically a WCW concept. Yeah, that is a good point to note, and I think their actual last Nitro was marketed as um, a Night of Champions special. It was. That so was anything- Booker T actually became the first guy to have the world in the U.S. title. <laughs> Yeah, but that's WCW but, you know, titles. It doesn't count. Yeah, but they, they don't want us to know that, of course. Booker does. Well, book, yeah, Booker <laughs> T did. <laughs> Booker T wanted everyone to know. <laughs> Yo, kudos to Booker T for standing up for himself during that. Yep. See, I'm trying to find something uh, good here to pull out of the chat room. <laughs> Oh, Let's see. Oh, oh, Kenneth wow. Cade, someone new here. I thought they were going to raise the tarp and the statue was going to be destroyed with Cena tagging all over it or something. And I actually had the same feeling. Actually, to call back to another time Cena tagged up something was when I believe it was JBL's car and him and Crime Time started spray painting all over it. Oh, uh, CTC. And John Cena used his excellent art skills to write JBL is poopy on the hood. <laughs> yeah. 
Thanks yeah. for that, John Cena. Yeah, it was a weak period, John Cena. <laughs> yes, yes, it was. Um, all right, guys, let's start running down some of the stuff we had here on Raw. We had our opening segment. Triple H and Seth Rollins are at WWE headquarters looking at all the various statues they have there of Bruno San Martino, Ultimate Warrior, and Andre the Giant. And in case you didn't know that, they reminded you about 20 times throughout the show. We got our uh, official Raw opening. Again, happy to see them continuing to use it in some kind of regularity. The show actually starts off with Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman coming out to the ring. Paul Heyman, continuing his fire as always, calls over to the timekeeper. The crowd starts booing the poor timekeeper. <laughs> and Paul Heyman calls them out. No, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, like, you know, speak on his behalf. Only you in Brooklyn would boo compassion. Good on Paul Heyman. Uh, Heyman invites out The Undertaker to fight, but instead of getting The Undertaker, we get Bo Dallas, who apparently had a death wish today. He went out and told Brock Lesnar to believe and was instead answered with three, no, wait, four, no, wait, five German suplexes, followed up by an F5. The crowd ate this the hell up. Like, they were begging for just another German suplex. It's not like it was some amazing move. It's not like they were begging for Neville to go do the Red Arrow. It was just for Brock Lesnar to do another, not even one, but another German suplex that he already did three, four of. <laughs> what a, what an amazing character that they have developed with Brock Lesnar. It shows the level of overness he has right now. And fuck, it's funny. I hear people complain and say it's boring that all he does is German suplexes. People are eating this shit up. They're buying t-shirts with Suplex City on them for their own fucking city. It's great. You should, like, if anything, they need to go the full length with this. I want to see him do this more often. Just start Germaning random guys? Yeah, fucking hell. Should do it to the timekeeper, too. So is Suplex City in Germany? Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully. It makes sense. <laughs> Kenneth Cade in the chat room saying, I believe I liked this opening segment, and I believe I did as well. Uh, Paul Heyman on fire, Brock Lesnar looking like an absolute beast, taking out Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas actually got to get on TV. Uh, him coming out and doing the lap around the ring was just fun to see Bo Dallas do a little bit of his shtick again. Uh, and the crowd being so into it. All in all, a great combo for a very good opening segment. Anything else to add, fellas? Nope, just a lot of fun, and if you didn't like it, then you're just one of those miserable fucks. <laughs> uh, Lucha Dragons against the New Day is our first match of the evening. Uh, best thing about this whole damn match is during New Day's entrance, Xavier Woods is introduced as the main feature, and out he comes playing a trombone. And this actually isn't the first time I've seen him playing a trombone. I remember, I think Tony showed me some random countdown video they had on YouTube or something that had him playing a trombone. So, Xavier Woods, man with a PhD and many other talents. Uh, he, he starts playing a version of New York, New York, with all of New Day joining together to sing it, actually as New Day, New Day. <laughs> this is a great thing to continue if they want to keep doing these parody songs. They did this two nights in a row last night doing the Puff Daddy song, and now doing this one tonight. These guys got some good voices. They got the dance moves. New Day has really settled into their shtick. Uh, they win this match with the big ending DDT. And uh, you think we're, as I said, a lot of these storylines were just continuing. They had primetime players on commentary. I didn't even mention that. I, I don't have a single note about what they said on commentary. The big thing that happened here is while New Day is celebrating their victory, Pyro goes off on the stage. And the instant I saw this Pyro going off, I'm like, that looks like the Dudley Boys Pyro. That can't be the Dud. Holy shit, it's the Dudley Boys. Yeah, the freaking <laughs> Dudley Boys making a return tonight. Now, we saw Bubba Ray Dudley make an appearance at the Royal Rumble earlier this year, and Philadelphia went nuts, and they teased some Dudley Boys stuff with uh, R Truth playing the part. Discount Devon. Devon. <laughs> Discount Devon. <laughs> um, but no, this was actually Devon. And I got to say, you know, everyone's credited Bubba Ray for losing lots of weight and dem calves and all that. Devon looked to be in pretty good shape tonight, too. A lot better than the last time I remember seeing him as uh, that Aces and Eights guy. So, happy to see both of these guys. And this is one of the most entertaining tag teams of all time. Brooklyn, eating up the get the table shtick. I mean, Bubba Ray didn't even need to say get the table. He just counted down and pointed to the audience and let them do it. Uh, interesting times. And this is definitely not a one-off because they kept using this whole term, we're back. And guys. they've been announced for SmackDown, too. 
There you go. Guys, good times having the Dub Dudley Boys back, and we've complained often about how lackluster the tag team division it is, and it's not even so much they have a lack of teams. It's just that they all suck. <laughs> I remember that we cracked up the other day that most recently, um, I think early last year, um, fucking the New Age Outlaws were tag team champions, and yet mm. they're bringing back another old school champion to do the job just because the teams of today ain't up to par. Um, there's no backing behind them, so they're not getting over. So this is a fresh change of pace. I'm glad the Dudley boys are back, and I say put the fucking titles on them. To be quite honest, none of the other teams are credible. Might as well, to be honest with you. I mean, I, you, you can get away with the, the New Day. I mean, they're weird heels, but they get the job done for what they're supposed to do. And honestly, I'd love to see a few between those two. And when it comes to like the the idea that uh, the tag team division is strong right now they always go through their highs and lows it's been like this for a number of years now and there's no in between so you might if you're going to bring them back might as well go all out with them give them a fucking title for Christ's sakes Mark Swabby in the chat room saying I love that the Dudleys are back Tony you've been quiet Dudley boys I believe you said earlier were not one of your favorite tag teams but I think even you felt the magic of this moment very much so. Um, I never disliked the Dudley Boys. I just wasn't uh, kind of like around at the time when they were at their peak. I never loved ECW, so I didn't get into them when they were in there. Like, mm -hmm. it, you know, Dudley Boys were kind of like, I missed the boat when it came to them. But having them come out, awesome. Uh, new days, awesome. Having a new, fresh, well, not new, uh, but f definitely a fresh tag team in the division is definitely going to help out, especially when you like, have people like the primetime players. You put them on commentary, what's the first thing they say? Hey, primetime players, all smiles. You guys just lost the fucking titles. Yeah, and, you know, to go what you're saying, you're saying it's not new and fresh. I could tell you, I don't think there's a single tag team in this division that we have seen face against 3D. No, so I mean that they're not a new tag team. Magic. At this point, they might as well. I bet you a lot of fans watching now probably still didn't know who the hell they are. Probably. I mean, they, they planned a good city going into Brooklyn because you had that smarter crowd. But if they did this in, heaven forbid, Sioux City, Iowa. <laughs> Let's put it this way. More than likely, people haven't been watching where they've been the past couple of years. Uh... <laughs> What well, did they like make some reference to that for like Bubba Ray or something? It was like you you were over in oblivion or something like that. <laughs> but I like the idea that they get here. I hope that we just skip past the uh, inevitable primetime players rematch. We just get Dudley Boys versus New Day. I'm hoping that they do something with the Dudley Boys and primetime players first because after they did their beat down on New Day and put them through the table, they did do a little bit of a face to face between them and primetime players, and that's where they said, "Do you know who we are? We're the Dudley Boys, and we're." Back. What I would do personally is I'd have them beat the primetime players to earn a number one contendership match mm -hmm. and then have them fight uh, the New Day at uh, Night of Champions. And the first time over, I'd actually have the New Day win because I think there's something in the chase for the Dudley boys to reclaim former glory. See, what I would do is I would have them win the first match, continue going through a series of matches that ultimately ends with New Day getting them back in a tables match. You want to talk about putting a team over? That's how you do it. See, I thought you said Taylor's match, so I was really confused. Yeah, and a Taylor Swift it. match. Oh, even better. <laughs> that would be fucking terrible. All right, guys, we want to get more opinions from you guys out there. Chat room is still going awesome. Shout outs to all you cool cats getting things going there. Creep is on the radar, has joined us. Ferris419, Grappled is Productions, Kenneth Cade, Marx, Wabi, and Wazili. Thank you all to all of you getting there in the chat room. Still a few guests there. Register with Blog Talk Radio. Get yourself in there. Uh, Twitter is open as well, at Raw Post Show, and, of course, the Facebook group, The Mega Maniacs. And we are going to now open up the phone line. So if you have a phone and you want to get an opinion about Raw, SummerSlam, TakeOver, or anything that went down this weekend, dial in the number 760-512-7247, and you'll have to wait a little patiently. we got a number of calls here, but I promise you we will find time for every single person who calls in to talk about stuff that went down. And we're going to take our first caller in. They're from the 646 area code. I believe this is Aisha. Aisha, how you doing tonight? Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? All doing tremendous. I think we're all a little burnt out. Happy this three day weekend is over, but we're all yeah. happy overall. I gotta say, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling good. Uh, uh, Saturday I went to take over. That was very fun. And uh, I was, so I was there as well. Oh man, what oh, a great yeah. show and what a great crowd. 
to to have been oh, there yeah. for. Oh yeah, I was so so happy to be a part of it, man. Just just being in a, in a show like that with just such passionate wrestling fans, it's, it's so much fun. To have witnessed those two main events, the the women yeah. and the ladder match. Like and, and, and the crowd, just how electric they were. I've never seen a crowd so passionately supporting both members of main events like they did for those. Yep. Especially the women's match. I think they were the loudest on that match. It was just crazy. Oh my now, I, I, I've i talked to people, and I guess this didn't come across TV, but uh, you saw the guys who threw the streamers, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So for at, anyone who wasn't at the event at NXT TakeOver, and you probably didn't see this on TV, but as they were introducing the guys, Kevin Owens and Finn Balor in the ring for the NXT championship match, there were some fellows uh, in the section behind where the announcer's table is who tried to throw in some streamers. Problem is, these yeah. guys could not throw. And these streamers so, fell the very is, short. You can't throw. <laughs> yeah, the whole crowd you starts chanting, you can't throw. But even worse for these guys, <laughs> they get ejected. They get ejected yep. from the building and they're being carried out and you hear the whole crowd booing them. They eventually start a chant of let them stay. I don't know if that made it to camera, but I know a lot of people noticed a little bit after the match started, the whole crowd is like looking to the side and very distracted and starts cheering raucously. And those guys come back into the building. I don't know how they talked themselves into it, but they were allowed to come back as they're coming down the stairs. Everyone's giving them like fist bumps and pounds and they get a hero's welcome coming back to their chairs. Man, they turned like three times. They turned. And, and also, yeah, face heel. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> and also, like, the crowd chanted, like, my section are chanting, turn on the screen, turn on the screen. Oh, <laughs> that, that was horrible. Then. Yeah, it was, I was. Uh, I think I was only, like, two or three sections over from you uh, on that top level. So that screen was very vital. And it was annoying. It was almost like the entire first half, I think, of that ladder match it was out. Yeah, oh, that was annoying. <laughs> Well, very good takeover show. What'd you think about SummerSlam though? That's been a very controversial show for a lot of people. Um, SummerSlam, it, to me, it had its hits and misses. Some matches, I, I mean, I would say two matches I enjoyed. I some I fell asleep. Some I was bored. I was on Twitter the whole time. Whew. It was just to me, it was average at best. It's just that the four hours, uh, it was just because the show just kept dragging so much. It's just like, ugh. <laughs> Saddest thing is that's one of the most positive opinions I've heard from people. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, it, it, I, I feel bad for those people that bought tickets, man. Like, I uh, was so I'll, close yeah. to it. Me and Tony both were. And not only were we going to not like try to get tickets, we tried to look on StubHub afterwards, so we were willing to pay above oh, no. face value for those tickets. And I'm so no. glad we didn't. Like, I knew that SummerSlam was not going to get over his takeover, like I knew. So, uh, on to Raw tonight, a very yeah. newsworthy edition of Raw. What'd you think about that show? Yeah, Raw is actually better than SummerSlam, I and mean, that's kind of weird to say. But, oh, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It was very good. Uh, especially Brock Lesnar doing his thing. Oh, Brock Lesnar. Oh, can never get enough of that guy. Uh, the Dolby Boys came back. Oh, my God. I marked out. So hard. I was not expecting that at all. Love the Dudley Boys. Good to see them back. So they're probably going to do pull a new age out raw and for nostalgia. Get the tag titles since, the, like you said, the tag t- um, scene is kind of lackluster. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, let's see. Uh, uh, no Sasha tonight. Yeah, that's pretty bummed out. Oh my gosh. And the, the whole uh, crowd was bummed out. They were chanting for mm-hmm. her hard. They they should have like just like Sasha just just run out there and do something. I know that was so sad. Mm, that tells you something too. <laughs> uh, indeed. Yeah, but, if you if if you yeah. had to rank the three shows from this weekend from best to worst, what would it be? Uh, of course, Takeover, This Raw, and SummerSlam. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> probably about where I would put it too. All right, your high point, low point from tonight's Raw. Uh. High point, definitely seeing the Dudleys coming back. We love the Dudleys. Low point, mm-hmm. uh, the, the Stardust, the Neville. I, mean, this is a, I came back. I went to go get a poop snack, and I come back. I see Stardust all out of the ring and, like, not doing anything. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, it happened so fast, and I don't know how the crowd was expected to really react to this. I mean, I guess they kind of reacted in favor of Cody Rhodes, but what's the next city going to act like? Because they're not going to yeah, get sympathy for Wade Barrett. It's, it's, it's a weird situation. Yeah, what happened? 
for that. I like went for a second, and I see that the match was over. I'm like, what happened? It, Co- Cody attacked Wade Barrett, and then just posed in the corner for a little bit. Hmm, and, oh yeah, and, then, and, and oh wait, no, Neville came out and then chased him out. So I don't hmm, know what the hell they're doing there. <laughs> um, but Aisha, we got lots of other callers we got to get to. We always appreciate you calling in. Glad you had a fun time at Takeover. I did as well. Oh. Awesome show. Um, and, you know, fun talking to you about SummerSlam and Raw as well. You have a good night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you too, guys. All right, fellas, taking it back over to y'all. Um, we had a match between uh, a rematch, actually, from SummerSlam with Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose going against Luke Harper and Bray Wyatt. I have to say a little bit of a step above their match last night, not necessarily because of the ending, but even match quality wise, there was a lot more excitement in this match. Uh, eventually the baby faces get control. Roman Reigns is doing his, Ooh, getting ready for the spear, but the little Wyatt bah thing happens. And when the lights come back on and we come back to the live feed, there's this giant dude standing on the ring apron, massively haggard dude, dirty clothes. It's not, Luke Harper. It's not Eric Rowan. It's some random guy I've never seen before. Never seen him on NXT. Never saw him on anything I've seen related to wrestling. I have no idea who this guy was. Uh, He is just a monster. He chokes out both Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose and the Wyatt family stands there posing. It's a new Wyatt family. Uh, We would go on later in the show to find out the name of this guy. Um, Shit, I didn't write it down. What the hell was his name again? Bram Stalwart or something? Braun Stoman. Braun Stoman? Braun Stoman. Okay. So TNA did not sign Braun. Oh. No. <laughs> Although, for some reason, Bray Wyatt said Stroman. Like the fucking bread. Well, I think that's just his weird accent. It might be. But it should have been uh, Braun Stroman. Yeah, man. <laughs> Stroman. <laughs> um... Interesting, interesting turn of events here. Um, This leads into that whole rumor people thought they were having for SummerSlam of the six-man tag, and everyone thought they were bringing in Leo Kruger, and then there were all these other rumors. Nobody, I I could say, saw this coming. And especially, like, as Wago was saying before, you would have thought they would have done something like this at SummerSlam. They chose instead to do it on this Raw. Uh, That's a questionable decision. Um, But uh, more importantly, I want to talk about this new guy, because... We're so used to now not really getting a surprise debut like this. You know, we're so used to people coming up through the NXT system that by the time they come onto the main roster, you're already fully familiar with who they are, what their character is, what they got, what you can really expect from them. And you have all these expectations. This is clearly out of the blue. And I I gotta say, I'm intrigued. I'm um, um, looking at his wiki right now and like he's some fucking professional strongman that's like won a bunch of fucking awards and stuff. Apparently he's wrestled once on NXT, like on their um, live events, but that's about it. Hmm. And he, he seemed like a guy, I mean, we didn't see too much from him, but he didn't seem too clumsy. He's not like great Kali levels, at least. <laughs> Thanks. From what little he did, to be quite honest, he interested me. I was um, intrigued, wasn't put, wasn't put off by him like I was when Kali first debuted, so... Or God, you remember um, who was Tyson Kidd's big muscled up guy he had for like three weeks? Oh, like I think I don't even think that lasted more than two weeks. That guy was fucking terrible. That guy was abysmal. He came out and he just was supposed to like clothesline somebody and he still messed it up. <laughs> I think his name started with a J or something. Uh, Jackson Andrews. There you go. Yeah. Oh, that guy was fucking awful. Anyway, back back to Bram Neely or whatever the fuck this guy's name is. Uh, <laughs> what, 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 what do you guys got to say about this? This is an interesting new character, I got to say. Looks like it's a hell of a step up from Eric Rowan. <laughs> uh, it was. And in fact, he even took Eric Rowan's sheet mask and now it's black instead of white. Yeah, the black sheep, which is like, eh, it's a- cool. A- Abigail's black sheep. I liked that. It's something different. So, um, Abigail, <laughs> they're going to do that at some point. You know, they are. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the guy's intimidating looking. And like you said, he didn't uh, come off like awkward or like clumsy or anything like that. So cool. I mean, if he can put together a good match to go with that, I'm all on board. He looks like he fits. He's intimidating as fuck. I'm just curious who's going to be the third member for uh, Reigns and Ambrose. That is very curious because, well, they're not going to get Seth Rollins. Uh, it looking like they're not going to get Sting either because that was the original rumored member. The Rock is the only one that's coming to my mind. 
Do you think oh. they'd do something stupid like having Eric Rowan be their partner? Oh. Uh, they might. He's still injured, though. They were talking about he won't be back till like, next year. Well, I got some dumb shit that I could see them doing. Oh. I just heard <laughs> the disappointment in paid, and it's like... Yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to pull some things out of the chat room here. Wazili saying, I dig me some Braun Strawman. Uh, Creepers on the right are saying Kruger would have looked so out of place with the Wyatts. Um, Mark Swabby saying he is a really big guy, but what's he like in the ring? And that's what we got to wait to see. I, I can't imagine they're going to start putting this guy out there in singles matches. At, at most, we'll see him in like tag team and six man tag matches for the foreseeable future. Because I, again, if this guy hasn't been training too much, I can't imagine he has too much skill. Maybe they showed him how to do a few slams and. He shouldn't have any problem doing that chokehold he does if he's a strong man. Not strong man, but a strong man. I was really hoping he was some indie guy that we just aren't thinking of, and he wore the same attire that he wore tonight that he did on the indies like Luke Harper did. So now I'm a little disappointed. Man, I knew that Nia Jax was going to make a big entrance. All right. Uh, well, with that, we're going to move on to an even uglier segment than what that guy was. Miz TV featuring Ooh. Team PCB. Kind of right. My God. So they spend the first five minutes of this or so with Paige for the most part, but the other girls joining in for a bit too. Basically just giving the girl power shtick and Miz kind of seeming like a... Uh, a chauvinist, honestly. Um, he had to use his pimp hand at one point to like make all the girls stop, and I don't remember. I think he called them like a bunch of like lame girls wrestlers or something like that. I don't remember what the exact insult he, he did. said. He they wrestle like other. girls. <laughs> um, PCP are. gets interrupted by Team Bella. Team Bella tries to shoot them down. Uh, Alicia Fox talks about how many people she's seen come and gone in the nine years. She's been there. She's been there for nine years. Shit. Alicia yeah. Fox has been there for nine years. All she's Fuck. done, all that did was make me realize, wow, you've been here nine years and accomplished fucking nothing. Oh, oh, she's she, she's done more in the Rose of Mendez. At least she's won the fucking title at one point. Mendez has even won that. Because of how fucking prestigious that belt is. Hey, she she can fucking say she did. This more than Mendez. Hey, well, that belt is so prestigious. They can prove that they're as dominant as any man. There's a butterfly on it for crying out loud. <laughs> oh, that was, when she said that, didn't she just kind of like want to pat her on the head? That was so, like, <laughs> look, I'm totally down for the idea that we can boost a women's division. But since when did this become anti-man instead of pro-women? That that's when feminism gets ridiculous. Yeah, and that that that's a whole topic I really don't want to get into. No, that's a whole but, long thing. Yeah, but they they about- really seem to like comparing themselves to Serena Williams and Ronda Rousey, and they these girls are nothing like them. Yeah, Serena Williams is a man too, so it's like, well, so is uh, Ronda Rousey according to Brock Lesnar. Yeah. <laughs> um. I like the uh, the crowd during the segment. We want Sasha. We want blue pants. And I love that Paige went to Twitter, as uh, Drew showed us earlier, and fucking was bitching about, uh, oh, you helped to start a revolution, and now you're trying to bring it down. Yeah. No? You're just the drizzling shits. <laughs> no, I was going to mention that as well. Yeah. At the end of the day, and I know we'll get into the match here in a minute, but, you know, the, the match itself, it, was, it wasn't anything. In- oh, then you can wait till we talk about the match, Drew. Oh. All right, great. <laughs> Uh, so Nikki is pushing the fact that she may have lost last night, but she is still the Divas champion. And that's the most important thing. And not just the Divas champion. She's two weeks and one day away from becoming the longest running Divas champion. And that, <laughs> you want to talk about nuclear heat, crowd was not happy to hear that. Um, it, it's getting close. And this is going to be before the next pay-per-view happens. I have to wonder if they're... They really need to have her at least have a title match before then, right? It would have to be on Raw or something. I would like to see. I don't know. A part they, of me that's got to be in jeopardy at some before. point. It has to be. Like I'm fine if she wins and she is the longest reigning one. I don't care about that. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think it needs to be in jeopardy at some point. And if you wait to the pay per view, you miss out on what could be an exciting moment. It's very rare that you get to pop the crowd with the women. So, or at least in WWE. So fucking take the chance. I think the best. 
I think the best chance they could do with something like that is like wait until like the raw, bef- like the raw before the record would be broken technically. They should just do a title match then. You know, make that the last chance for her to hold to prove that she should be the champ for the, that long. Uh, Mark Swabi is correcting me. Three weeks in one day. Uh, and that's three. that's the perfect time to do it. Have it the day before. And if she loses it, to have herself lose it one day before she breaks the record. Think of how devastating and how much like egg on her face that would be. Well, if, you uh, wanted a, if you wanted to totally kill um, that side of the, the fucking feud. I mean, they're already <laughs> beaten and well, defeated they're... already. Yeah, they already did. Like, if we really are just trying to push aside them, and I think that's what they're doing, then yeah, just do that, and then we could just get this new crop of divas up and move on from there. You know what, though? I don't, like, consider Paige a part of this fucking revolution. I've always found her somewhat overrated. What she... do you mean? She started it. That's what they said in the Stone Cold podcast. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what they say. The reality <laughs> of it is the girls who were wrestling in NXT started it, and she was a part of that for a while when she wrestled um, the fucking phone case thief. But... Since, <laughs> but um, since then, she's not done anything to prove herself on the main show. So, to be quite honest, I've got no interest in seeing her be the face of it. And I think when Nikki finally loses that belt, that's the uh, girl I want to put it on. So Paige Nikki had Payne. a year on the roster to turn things around, and she didn't. She was a two-time champion, so it's not like they've eluded that belt from her. She won it on her first night. <laughs> No, yeah, but I mean, also, she didn't yeah, make this big revolution like she's claiming that she started. We spent an entire year where we were going, yeah, these matches still suck. Well, no, she, she had some they were okay doing. matches with AJ. That's about it. Well, now we can actually talk about the match, Drew. This all led to a six <laughs> diva tag team PCB against team Bella. Crowd was having none of this match. They were chanting for Sasha Banks. They were chanting for Blue Pants. They were doing the wave. They were chanting for JBL. Every typical thing that the crowd does to prove that they are too good for the match currently going on in the ring that we've seen them doing the last number of years, they did. It was New York after all. Mm-hmm. Uh, these poor women. I gotta say, I don't. I don't care like what it is. Like, come on, you're there for a wrestling event. You don't need to be that obnoxious. <laughs> Like, there, there's a point to boo. There's a point to things like that, but I don't know. The, I think the wave is when it starts to get a little too far. I, as much as I've always wanted to be a part of a wave, because it just looks fun. <laughs> Sorry, wait, go ahead. I think a lot to do with it is they're the most outspoken fans, and to be quite honest, the uh, we've how many times have we seen this combination um, already just from this one feud? I'm over Pretty it. Many. I'm over it, and everyone else is over it too. Don't like that's the only that's the only way that WWE really get anything because if you use your voice, so if you're not happy with it, speak out. But with your dollar, Drew, you actually had something you want to say about this match? Yeah, and it, it goes back to the uh, the tweet that Paige sent out. She's complaining about something, but about the fans' reaction to it. But at the end of the day, you're the one that's going out there and performing. It might tell you backstage to hit certain points, but I think they have full capabilities that these people could go out and p- perform or something. If you don't want the crowd to turn on you like they did tonight, then do something to make them not fucking turn on you and not complain about it. That's a big thing. And, you know, I, I, I do admit, when it's not the wave part that bothers me. It's when we can start ch- chanting for JBL and Michael Cole. And, fuck, I was going to cheer for uh, Saxon now, but... We are going to... <laughs> Oh, yeah. the We Are Awesome chant is the absolute fucking worst. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I hate those you chants. self-serving, but just... <laughs> indulgent, fucking smarky douches. Yep. I, know they were in, I know where they were in fucking Brooklyn. Were they in fucking Williamsburg? All the fucking hipsters in that damn arena? Oh, man. <laughs> but at the, really of, yeah, at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's just, if you're going to go out there and perform you should expect you're used you should be used to shit like this but i mean i don't know i just think that if you're going to complain about something then do something about it instead of complaining about it and i know this whole divas revolution thing and wago mentioned earlier but yeah page is definitely not the face of this it's all about the nxt and stephanie said it back at best at nxt takeover when the divas revolution started in nxt and i'm gonna allude to that probably forever Creepers on the radar is in the chat room saying those fans are assholes. The girls did good. Yeah, another comment here I wanted to read too. 
set it all up so Eva Marie can waltz in at WrestleMania a star and become the new Divas champion. I'd be down for that. <laughs> I hate to admit that, but I would. I I'll actually pass on that. If she impressed me a bit more with her debut, I would have been totally down for that. She still has a little little work to do. She has gotten a lot better, though. I, when she, I she has. When she, she absolutely has. When she can go for 20 minutes without fucking up, then you can bring her up. Listen, the Bellas used to be total, total shit. They used to be the Drizzly they, shits. <laughs> they have come so far. And they're still not great, but they're good. Which is a shit ton more than they were once. So, and they've really kind of molded like Eva Marie to kind of be like the replacement for the Bellas. So, there you go. <laughs> maybe maybe she'll be able to follow in their footsteps in that sense. Uh, with that, we are going to move on from this topic, and we're going to start taking another phone call here. A reminder to all you out there listening to the most interactive post raw experience available: the Raw Post Show here on MegapowersRadio.com. You can join us anytime via the phone lines now. Dial in. 760-512-7247. We also got Twitter at Raw Post Show, the Mega Maniacs Facebook group, and of course the chat room right here on blogtalkradio.com. Introducing our next caller from the 609 area code. Who's there from 609? Yo, it's, it's Jaden. What's up, Jaden? How you doing tonight, dude? Uh, good, good. Uh, Raw was... It was pre- it was pretty good. It was one of the better matches in 2015. So I I rate that. It was, was very good. Yeah, Raw was a very good match. Uh, what was yeah. your favorite parts about? Um, obviously, I um, even though the Dudley Boys came back, I really like that Sting came out. That was a shocker. I kind of mm. thought that um, John Cena will like be in there or something, but. I can't believe Sting came out, came out and, um, yeah, it wasn't really, like, like they weren't really, like, fighting that much, but it was just a shocker. But It was um, a surprise when they lifted that curtain. I mean, there was a number of things I was trying to suspect could be under there. None of them were Sting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and there was Sting. But um, also, I liked um, uh, the – I thought that Eric Rowan would, like, come back. But they have some random guy from NXT who came out. I think he personally, I like it because he like he looks like the like the most dominant person in WWE right now. Like he looks well. he looks in better he he doesn't look in better shape than Brock Lesnar, but he he looks like he can beat Brock Lesnar. So Whoa, like no. No. Yes. No. Yes, he destroyed no, Roman Reigns no. and Dean Ambrose. Yes. But, and you think Brock Lesnar couldn't do that? Oh, mm, well. Brock we Lesnar could suplex both of them so. at the same time. Yeah, Roman well, Reigns didn't beat Brock Lesnar. He he did a good job on fighting him, so I think that I don't know. I just don't know, but um. I also like uh, the Dudley Boys came out. That was a shocker. I did not expect that, and they just did what they did a few years back. So I'm um, I'm really excited for what's going to happen you, at the tag team because the tag the team, Boys? like the tag team division, was dry as hell. Like it was so dry. But um, yeah, but. I like take I, I like take I I did like take over better than SummerSlam because like SummerSlam was like ugh, it was like it was so irrelevant I didn't like it I didn't enjoy it. So if you had to put the three shows in best to worst, how would you put them? Um, I would go with uh. Wait, excuse me. Repeat that the, again. The three shows from this weekend: Takeover, SummerSlam, and Raw. How would you rank them from best to worst? Um, TakeOver, Raw, then, um, SummerSlam. Oh, that's two I, for two so far with our callers. Yeah, I mean, think about it. TakeOver was one of, like, that, like, you had, um, I was talking to one of, um, the people who come on here, and they were like, um, he, he, he said that, um, that was the best match in Diva's history. I was like, are you serious? And that match was pretty good. I don't know if it was the best. I don't know if they could top 
Um, I I don't know if Bailey and um, Sha- Sasha could top Chris Status tra- Status and um, uh, Lita, but it was a pretty good match. All right, and your high point, low point for the night's raw, Jaden. Um, I would go with uh, Sting in the in the um in the thing, and then um Sting the thing. <laughs> That's a new version of Hell to Sell. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> I have no idea. Like the trophy case thing. I don't know what the heck. Yeah, it I wouldn't was, know what to but, call um, it either, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm on there with you. Yeah. Um. And then um. Oh, this is tough, actually. Uh, the whole segment between um the in the Divas Re- Revolution, I thought it could it could have been better. And I actually wanted um someone to be in the Divas Revolution that's not it's Emma. Emma should have been in the Divas Revolution from day one. It would have been good, so. but you know what? Emma's character was in a bad spot. Um, they they've been yeah. doing wonders with her. I gotta say, I I watched her at Takeover. They did a one hour pre show that's gonna air as the NXT hourly episode this week. That I highly suggest everyone watches if you watch NXT in any type of uh, manner. Uh, they're they're doing a one hour segment from Brooklyn in the Barclays Center, just like they've done all these shows. And the the uh-huh. matches they had there were great. Emma was in a fatal four way with her Charlotte, Becky, and Data Brooke of all people. Oh, fatal four way. I thought she was running with crime time now. <laughs> well, um, she performed very well. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Watch the match, Jaden. We got a lot of other callers here. We got to move on to and lots of other stuff to talk right. about. Always cool to hear from you, dude. You have a good night, man. You too. Bye. All right, another cool cat calling in here on the Raw Post Show on Mega Powers Radio, the most interactive post Raw experience available. We don't just call it that for no goddamn good reason. We do it because we invite all of you out there to get your opinions about what went down in this historic weekend for wrestling. There was Raw, SummerSlam, TakeOver, lots of stuff I'm sure is on your mind. So call in, dial it with your phone, 760-512-7247. Let us know what's on your mind. Continuing the conversation with us here uh, we had Wade Barrett waiting in the ring for a tag match coming up. His partner, Stardust, comes out and out of nowhere attacks King Barrett, lays him out with the Queen's crossbow and poses in the corner for a moment. This prompts Neville to come out for some reason. Neville just could not have Stardust beating up King Barrett and he beats up Stardust for a little bit, teases the red arrow. Stardust runs out. The fuck? Hey, that guy that beat me up is beating up that other guy that beats me up. (laughs) I'll save you guy that beats me up. This would make more sense if there was a backstage segment earlier that like that built to this, but there wasn't. So this is what was I I liked it, but it confused the shit out of me for the random Wade Barrett attack. What sucks is Wade Barrett's probably gonna go into obscurity unless as unless they do some type of feud between him and Stardust going forward. So hopefully they do the Red thing and turn him face, maybe. Maybe this is just to drop the king gimmick so he's no longer the cosmic king and he can go back to being bad news Barrett. I wouldn't mind seeing face Barrett versus fucking um, uh, Stardust. Like, that'd be a good feud. Wait, so much for break. that being a tag team. Sorry, Did anybody really that. think that he was going to be tagging with him, like, uh, you know, for good? Nah, I, what else? Feeling. I, I, I was hoping so. I didn't, I didn't necessarily have the feeling, but I'm just thinking, like, what else are they going to do with these guys over the next few months? And they cut a damn good promo lead on like the weeks uh, before SummerSlam. So oh, that backstage thing where they were both in Stardust's little starry shed or wherever yeah. the fuck they are. Starry, starry <laughs> shed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what were you saying, Tony? I think Wego hits the nail on the head on this. Uh, this is just for them to figure out a way to get it rid of the king gimmick. Turns babyface about what like a year or two late. And starts a feud with uh, Stardust because you can't be keep uh, keep doing this whole Neville and Stardust thing for too much longer. And Neville, I don't know who he feuds with, but he's kind of going back and forth between like having a feud and not having a feud. So maybe Stardust and Barrett are it's, it's the next feud going forward, and then Neville does whatever. I don't know. The big issue is though. What the fuck did they do with Bad News Barrett after all this if he does turn face? He can't really feud for a belt right now because Roy backs in at the IC champion and there's no way he's... A f- and the US title's gone. Um, I don't know what they do with him after that. I think he's going to get lost in the shuffle kind of like Fandango did. Could be. I- or you could just put him with another random guy like 
Kevin Owens or something that yeah, someone else is in the mid card. They have higher hopes on Baird. They've had higher hopes on him for a while. I mean, fan Dango, that was doomed to fail. Uh, people have always considered Baird a, 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 a world champion in some time in the future, and it just never happened due to injuries or just bad booking. So he's someone that they've always looked highly upon. So they'll find something for him to do if they turn him face. They wouldn't do it for no reason. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know why Neville had to continue being involved. Again, I was just saying there was a theme in this where we're having all these stories continue at a SummerSlam. No reason for this to continue. And I forget who said it. I think it was in the Mega Maniacs official chat we do during Raw. But they made a very good point. Who was supposed to be Neville's tag team partner for this match? Maybe it was going to get like a rematch, but it just never <laughs> came to fruition. So like Stephen yeah. Amell is like, what, what the fuck? Like I flew all the way... I had play- I wanted to make my raw debut. What the fuck? Uh, it was staying. <laughs> I remembered my attire this time too. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I got a, I got my own music now. Oh, it's gonna be so much better in SummerSlam, guys. I promise. Hey, maybe it was Diggle. Oh, that would've been great. So, do you think it'll be a triple threat match between the three going forward? Probably. Or why? There's no, no fucking. Issue. There's no reason it should happen though. Yeah. Like, oh, there's, there's totally like, what's a on the line. No one has a common goal, like uh, which the all two, like, all three guys are in the way of. So it makes no sense. Oh, no, there's. They, they still do the comic theme with reason it. Here, they've got Barrett is going to be pissed at Stardust because he attacked him, and Neville is going to be pissed at Stardust because he attacked Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, when you put it like that, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> Stupid as hell, but they're totally going to do a triple threat. Dumb as shit. Yeah. Hey. Oh, goodness. It should be well, good. We, we, we want to know what all you out there got to think about that one. Keep using all those interactive means. We got Twitter, Facebook, the chat room, and the phone lines. Moving on to the next segment, we had Jon Stewart coming out to the ring, in which I was just shocked. Uh. It's not like, not like we expected Jon Stewart to be there. It wasn't advertised. At least I don't think it was i didn't see it advertised anywhere uh john stewart there for the second night in a row he was the host of SummerSlam last night of course if you are living under a rock and you don't know john stewart interfered in the title for title match last night shoving a chair into the ribs of john cena allowing john or, excuse me seth rollins to win the u.s title to become a double champion with both that and the world heavyweight title such a shocking tonight, moment nobody knew he was gonna do it <laughs> well tonight he comes out to brooklyn to a hero's welcome with them chanting thank you Stuart for him uh, he comes out to give his reasoning which is that he did it to protect Ric Flair's 16 title legacy and he did it because he did not want to see Ric Flair not hold that t- like milestone anymore for some reason gotta be fair to Flair <laughs> well Ric Flair just happened to be in the building that night and came out and started actually arguing that he was rooting for Cena. He wanted Cena to do it. Jon Stewart is flabbergasted. He can't believe what he's hearing. He, he covers his ears. No, Ric Flair, you, you can't be serious. John Cena comes out. John Cena is all business. Says that, uh, well, you know, I understand that you were just doing what you felt you had to do. So I'm sure you'll understand that I'm doing what I feel I have to do. And lays out John Stewart with an attitude adjustment. Gotta say, not not a bad bump by John Stewart. He took that thing pretty well. I I don't know where this is going from here. Um, John Cena got escorted out later on in the night, so he couldn't keep himself involved with uh, the ceremony they had for Seth Rollins. So I don't know if that was him being written out of the title picture. Uh, if he's not going to try to get his rematch for the U.S. title, I guess John Stewart did mention like, oh well, you know, I did you a favor. Now you can win it back. It'll be great. Uh, I don't know if John Stewart's going to continue to get involved. If this was still a one-off, they just happened to have him come out the next night, or if he's going to continue to poke himself into the way of John Cena or in favor of Seth Rollins or however that might work. There's some questions here, so I, I got to say at least it's left that. But for the most part, this kind of left a sour taste in my mouth. Wago, I know you're the most sour on it. This segment was fucking abysmal, and John Stewart's participation in WWE has been fucking abysmal. He sucked in his opening speech at SummerSlam. He sucked when he interfered against uh, John Cena. And he sucked tonight. Don't have him back. It was fucking terrible. And honestly, I think this is going to be the last of the feud. I think this was just... I think they just needed a reason for Seth Rollins to win. 
and that's all they came up with. And Cena's got his um, revenge on Jon Stewart now. As far as where Cena goes from here, I wouldn't be surprised if he wins the US title on Raw thanks to Sting because um, Knight of Champions, every belt has to be defended. So maybe that'll happen, but the segment was just god-awful. Just just poor acting on Stewart's part, poor acting on everybody's part. It was just shit. Now, Drew, you're a little bit younger than the rest of us here. By the time you really became of a conscious age to pop culture, Jon Stewart was already a thing. So I can remember an era before Jon Stewart. Um, But by the time you came around into it, he was already kind of a legend amongst the younger people. Um, How have you felt about his participation? Uh, I don't know if it's as sour as Wago, but I... I don't think the 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 segment they did tonight, oh god, <laughs> but uh, I don't think the segment they did tonight was too bad. Uh, you know, he was sounding like he was like a genuine fan, you know, and so I understood what I could I somewhat relate to Cena, him not wanting Cena to break the uh, the record or tie the record. So I'm not too harsh, but. What he did yesterday was definitely not good at all, and God, just like his involvement, it it could have not been used. They could have found someone else to do it, but at the end of the day, when you get a celebrity, you shouldn't expect greatness from them. You should just expect mediocrity, and if they do something amazing, then hey, that's cool, but we should just get used to the fact that not every celebrity is going to be a hit, and as John Stewart's one of them, so it sucks to be him, but I want to. Kenneth Cade in the chat room here is saying John Stewart should join J and J Security, become J and J and J Security. <laughs> Too many damn J's. That actually might work, unfortunately. Yeah, they're all a bunch of little pipsqueaks wearing suits, being annoying to people. He could be like the mafioso guy of it. He could be the main business guy, <laughs> and all that stuff. Tony, you're uh, the, the biggest movie buff here in TV too, so you're a lot more into the celebrity aspects of things than than us are. Um, how is this rubbing you? And, and do you think that there is more room for John Cena to do stuff in the, not John Cena, John Stewart to do stuff in the future, especially since his schedule is so freed up from the daily show now? Oh, we got to get John Stewart versus Stephen Colbert, WrestleMania. It's going to happen. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not as down on this as what, uh, Wego and Drew to an extent are. I think the best part about this was actually John Stewart. And I think the worst part about this was Ric Flair. Flair is a joke. At least it wasn't as bad as Mick Foley. No, yeah, that's true. Foley, I, I love Foley, but shit, that was so fucking pointless. So having him come out here and having him say that that's the reason why he did it. All right. It's not the best excuse in the world, but it's at least an excuse. That's better than what I figured they would do, which is just like, well, let's just skip over it. You know, or just make some kind of bullshit thing where they're like, well, they're friends now. And that's why. Yeah, so. because he had heat with Seth Rollins and they addressed that, too. And they even like had that moment for him of realization, like, oh, God, I I didn't even realize what I was doing. I didn't realize I was helping Seth Rollins. It's like, oh, so, you know, he still does have that heat with him. Yeah. That's and good. he said tonight, look, this wasn't to help out Seth Rollins. It was to fuck over John Cena. So I like that. Flair coming out, though, I mean, they kind of had to have him do that to an extent, but Flair's just ridiculous. It's just, you know, let me strut to the ring, look like I'm having a heart attack, and then, you know, <laughs> woo, a couple of times and whatever like that. And especially him just standing off on the side watching this shit happen, like, you know, the uh, hell with that. But I'm really curious what they do with John Cena now because they've already announced Sting versus Seth Rollins for Night of Champions. They did? Yep, they just did that when we were doing our last calls. Jesus Christ, <laughs> they don't waste any time. Yeah, well, that was that whole exclusive interview thing. I, I'm assuming that that's what they were talking about. And they but that's up on the website like now. Swerve for that. Mm. So now it's like, what do they do with John Cena? Um, I mean, I, I guess Seth Rollins could do two matches, right? I guess um, could job out Kevin Owens again. That's always a popular choice. <laughs> Who else is on the rise right now? John Cena could job out. Um, Cesaro's uh, doing pretty well too. He could job him out again. Oh, if you really want him to job somebody out, the new Bray Wyatt guy. <laughs> just, just <laughs> oh, no. for immediately. Just skip right to the chase. I mean, it's gonna happen eventually. He's gonna be the big guy that feuds with John Cena. Right. Fucking, let's just get it out the way with now. <laughs> Honestly, Do a whole year story in one week. Yeah. Great. Let's 
stop the bullshit now and see if we can go back to defending the title each week. On, honestly, they they um they, since. So uh, Cena just broke the record or, you know, just made his 500th wish. A lot of people look up to him as a superhero. It's a little bit far-fetched and they're not going to do it. They technically could do a Stardust and John Cena feud where Stardust is like, oh, you're a hero, but not and to me. what? A wish? They normally use the logo of a star. It's right there. Ooh. I'm just happy you didn't suggest that he should be fighting that little Rocco kid. <laughs> it's like, well, he did make him a wish. And now he's coming for payback. Oh. <clears throat> and then they can blow it off at payback. Yeah, there you go. It could be a whole year-long storyline. <laughs> Wonderful. Like, like The Rock. It still would be better than Cena wrestling that fatty. Who, Kevin Owens? No, the other fatty. New fatty. Who? Wyatt fatty. Oh, Wyatt fatty. Okay. <laughs> That'd be specific. A lot of fatties. Could be bull fatty. Brodus Fatty. Samoa Fat. Samoa Fatty. <laughs> Can we just agree that this new Bray Wyatt guy looks like he is really into Mountain Dew and Jesus? Oh my gosh, dude. Like, I expected like him to pull that mask back and like little crumbs of Cheez Its to fall out. <laughs> I was really expecting him to pull like Cheez Its out of his like. Uh, you guys uh, are beard. just like, oh, wait. Oh, I missed. I forgot some fell. And just eat him right there. Yeah, well, the ball is in that guy's court. So, see how he does. Uh, let's go ahead and take another caller here. We're going to take on another caller from the 609 area code. Other 609er. Who's there? Hey, Chanel. What's up, guys? What's shaking, Chanel? How did you think about this three-day weekend of wrestling that we had? Man, it's been fun. It's been fun um, to see all this action, uh, watch it all. It was very exciting, and a lot happened. Uh, with these three nights, so it's going to be interesting to talk about it. Sure did. So why don't you uh, talk about some of the points that hit you the most? I mean, there's no shortage of both good and bad things, I think, to talk about. What are you feeling the most passionate about after all this weekend? NXT is the number one wrestling show right now to me. Hell yes. Amen. Yep. Bailey and Sasha tore the house down. Go to Kevin Owens and Balor. Uh, Juice and Thunder Lager showed up. It was Brooklyn uh, takeover was amazing. It absolutely was. Uh, I've said it a number of times. I had the pleasure to be there in person. One of the best shows That's I've been to in match. recent memory. Um, matter of fact, the last number of shows I went to have actually not been very good. Uh, one of them being the Royal Rumble this year where that fucking crowd was one of the... It was an interesting thing, but honestly, it, it, it wasn't a very fun show, which honestly was a lot WWE fault as well. Uh, what certainly was WWE's fault was WrestleMania 29, which was abysmal. Um, and then I went mm. to, it was yeah. some No Way Out where I think the main event was John Cena against John Laurinaitis or something fucking horrendous. <laughs> um, so to have been there for that was was major step up. Um, and I have to say there, there's something almost magical to NXT right now. Like the level of how good and how fun their shows are compared to how rocky and abysmal SummerSlam was. It works, man. It works. It, it does indeed. Um, now, Raw tonight, uh, after SummerSlam went down, we're pretty much going into a new chapter. We saw some new people, some returns. Uh, what would you think about all the, the debuts and returns we got tonight? I'm interested in that um, big guy from the Wyatt family. I I forgot his name right now, um, but... I, <laughs> I don't think anybody knows his name yet. It's uh, Bram Stoker. <laughs> Thank you, man. All right. <laughs> Mad token. So I haven't seen him on NXT or nothing, and you know he looks like a monster. So it's going to be interesting to see what he can do. Yeah, he, he dominated feet. those guys there, and it's it's good to see the Wyatt family as a trio again. When they were there posing the three of each other, it already looked like it gelled. It looked like it was natural, and it was something we're probably going to be seeing a lot of. And it's not exactly something I dread. Um, right. The big thing we got was Sting coming out, and as Tony just said, I guess this is official for Night of Champions. We got Sting against Seth Rollins. Uh, what do you think about that? I, I mean, I wasn't as high on it as most people are. I like Sting, but I don't like him that much. I I thought it was a little, I thought it was a little bit underwhelming because I like his entrance. I like to see all the cool effects, but and Sting just coming out to face Seth Rollins. Even though he has no beef with him, it's just kind of odd. And out of nowhere. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Chanel, let me ask you, the three shows this weekend, if you had to rank them from best to worst, how would you do it? Same as everybody else. All right, yeah, so that would be um, TakeOver, Raw, and then SummerSlam. Seems to be a very popular yeah. opinion um, so far that's uh, that's unanimous. Uh, your high point and low point for Raw tonight? The high point The high point was, uh, damn, um, actually a lot, a lot of things. Nothing stood out to me that much. And low point was the Divas Revolution. I I was very high on it, and it's just crumbled week by week by week, and it's starting to become a joke again. And it sucks because there there are a bunch of talented divas now in the main roster, and it should be a lot better. Well, based on what we saw at NXT, hopefully brighter days are on the horizon. Uh, but uh, Chanel, we got to keep moving. We got a couple other callers here, and only about a little over a half hour left of the show. Good talking to you as always, man. We'll catch you on the flip flop. All right, thanks, man. All right, fellas, bringing it back to you, cool cats that we have listening to us. Get your opinions to us in every way that we have available to you. The phones, the chat room, the Twitter, the Facebook group. We want to know what you got to say about all that went down. There's a lot of strong opinions out there. Uh, Creep is under radar, taking over the chat room here. People were giving him lots of praise earlier. He, he has one of his nuggets here. Uh, we might as well go with Dracula as the name of this new guy. The guy keeps being told about, we keep being told about how much of a monster he is. It's a good thing to go with it. Mark Swabby saying Bram Stoker, have him team with PTP. Grapple this productions. I am missing Chrisley knows best. What? Chrisley knows best return tonight. Damn. Yeah, what are we doing in this show? Yeah. Right. And this hey. is the Chrisley knows best uh, during show. Everyone knows that. Uh, well, this was Raw, so of course we had to have some type of tag match where we just joined a bunch of random storylines together with the guys facing each other, and they went hardcore with this. <laughs> Pretty much three or four, what is it, three or four storylines amalgamated into one match here for, and all of them were ones we had at SummerSlam last night, so again, all of these, I guess, are continuing. We had Big Show, Rusev, Sheamus, and Kevin Owens teaming up to go against Ryback, Dolph Ziggler, Randy Orton, and Cesaro. First thing you're going to notice when you're watching this match, Dolph Ziggler has uh, upgraded his attire a little bit. He's got pants. Full length pants. They're not blue pants, though. I'm fine with him wearing pants. It's less of his fucking fake tan that I see. <laughs> they still look ridiculous with all the zippers and, and shit they got on them, but. Uh, yeah. Well, at least he different. doesn't look like fucking Alundra Blaze like Seth Rollins did. Oh, God damn. Um. So this ends when Big Show accidentally knocks out Sheamus with the weapon of mass destruction, allowing Randy Orton to get an RKO for the win. Uh, baby faces celebrate, leave the ring. Kevin Owens and Rusev are getting in Big Show's face like, what the crap are you doing? What would what, you punch out our own guy for? Finally, Big Show shoves down Kevin Owens. That prompts the two of them to start beating down Big Show. Kevin Owens hits him with the cannonball in the corner. Uh, and this leads the baby faces to come in like a pack of hyenas. The baby faces... Coming in like a pack of hyenas, crowding around Big Show. Um, I, f I think Dolph Ziggler hits him with a kick, and then Cesaro and Ryback lift him up. Randy Orton hits him with an RKO. What did Big Show do to deserve that? He that already like looked like an <laughs> asshole for knocking out his own team member, and then he had his own teammates beat him up. And then you got to go and pick on him like this? This had me wondering what the fuck during it. I'm like... Wait, wait, wait. These guys are your baby faces? Like, was this meant to turn Big Show? Everyone's a fucking asshole. <laughs> One thing that I did get a chuckle out of this, though, um, when Kevin Owens got out of the ring, he, like, went up to Sheamus to check on it, and he was like, eh, nah, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Kevin Owens had a shining moment with that. Everyone else, though, did not stick out at all. Uh, I mean, I guess the big story here was Big Show. Is is it building sympathy for him for a face turn? I mean, shit. Probably. I, <laughs> I mean, I'm with as many baby face and heel turns as Big Show has had. I mean, well, sympathetic Big Show. Um, yeah, I'm done with that stage of Big Show. I've had to seen enough tears. <laughs> um, Tony, are you happy to see any of these stories continuing? Uh, I don't know. I mean, 
By the way, apologies for uh, the cricket that you could probably hear. It's yeah. totally... Oh, uh, you know, sweet. It's left my house. It's gone back to you. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the reasons why I've been muted to all of us this whole time. Uh, um, yes and no. I... I... <laughs> what curious? I don't hear one. Well, you break them down, like, the four different possible options we could go with here. Of course, I don't want to see Orton and Sheamus anymore. I really don't care anymore about Ryback and Big Show. Rusev and Ziggler, that should have ended at SummerSlam. Cesaro and Owens, I'm okay with that. But really what I would like to see here is these four-on-four groupings switch it all up. Maybe give us, like, Kevin Owens versus Ryback for the title Maybe well, they're they're clearly not ending Rusev and Ziggler, but maybe Big Show starts feeding with Sheamus. Maybe Cesaro and uh, Orton. Uh, it's not going to happen, but you know, this was an all right match. Kenneth Cade in the uh, chat room saying, "I hope they don't turn Big Show face again. He has flip flopped enough." Oh boy, Kenneth Cade. <laughs> Hope, hope you better strap in because there's still at least four or five more turns before this guy actually does retire, I would say. Yeah, and I think there's one destined for Kane when he comes back, too. <laughs> and then uh-huh. another one a couple months after it. Remember that when he made that really big return where he came back with the welder's mask? Mm-hmm. And he was like this vicious heel, and then he turned babyface like three weeks later, and he started doing Team Hell no shtick. They can't fucking help themselves. <laughs> um... So yeah, meaningless raw tag match play. We go backstage, we see John Cena approached by the authority who tell him that he cannot get himself involved in the statue presentation that's going to be happening in our main event. And, you know, they also see him as a danger because he just attacked John Stewart and they have a point. This is like a defenseless, relatively old man. John Cena laid his hands on him and laid him out with a very, you know, dangerous move if you're not someone who's trained to take that. John Cena is an asshole. And so they had him escorted out by security. Good. Crowd yeah. loved this. <laughs> and I was happy because I was like, oh, so I guess John Cena is not going to get involved with this. And, you know, I still had this worried part of me. Oh, maybe he'll still like, you know, have done something to the statue. And when they drop the curtain that we're going to see what John Cena did. Ha ha. Oh, they got us. Uh, luckily, that's not where they went. We, we come back after a commercial. Triple H and Stephanie are out before they unveil the statue. Stephanie first has to wish her father, Vince McMahon, a 70th birthday. And, yo, honestly, kudos to Vince McMahon. 70 is a lot of years. He has accomplished so much in that lifetime. Um, For all the shit people give him for some of the decisions he's made lately, and I'll admit, I I haven't liked him all either. The guy is a freaking legend. Um, Quite possibly the single most important person in this industry. So, happy 70th birthday to Vince McMahon, gotta say. Yep, happy birthday to Vince. If he didn't do what he did, we probably wouldn't be talking about wrestling right now. Uh, Happy birthday. Stephanie leads the whole crowd singing happy birthday. And my favorite part about this is the the announcers start joining along. And first off, they're freaking terrible. But JBL, being the total kiss-ass he is, like everyone else, you hear him saying, Happy birthday, dear Vince. JBL is still like, happy birthday, dear Mr. McMahon. <laughs> and he's the only one who, like, set, you could hear his voice coming out of everyone else saying that. JBL's hilarious. Uh, after they move on from the birthday wishes, Seth Rollins comes out, starts bragging about his accomplishments, as he does. Uh, finally, we get the reveal of the statue. But it's not the statue, it's Sting! Yeah, Sting. I got to say a surprise. I mean, people were upset. We didn't get to see him at SummerSlam as we probably should have. We got him instead on the raw after sting making a surprise appearance, beating back Seth Rollins, starting his troubles up with the authority once again. And I guess it's already been made official for night of champions sting versus Seth Rollins. And they did say it was for the title, Tony. Yep. All right. Well, we already have, uh, uh, one of our matches announced for Night of Champions, and I gotta say, it's it's a fresh match. It's uh, Sting. We've only seen have one match so far against Triple H. To, to see him rather than what they usually do with these part timers, where they keep them facing off against the other big name part timers, they're they're having him go against a fresh young guy 
Uh, he's the biggest star that they have on the rise right now. So awesome. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, fellas, how are you feeling, though? Are you happy to see Sting in here? I, I know a lot of us got to at least be upset that he wasn't there last night. Of course they're keeping him around. They get to job him out again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's totally not winning the title here, that's for sure. Yeah. You know, you know what? Just... I'm very, very happy that we're getting this because beforehand I had written my usual. I try to do predictions for the next pay-per-view immediately after whatever one just ended. And I was like, all right, well, guess we're getting John Cena for two more pay-per-views because it'll do the whole like rematch at Night of Champions. And then, oh, this match just happens to happen again because it's in a hell in a cell. Like, oh, great, fantastic. I don't want to see this three times in a row. You bring out Sting and it's like, okay, shit. That's something different. Do you think he'll wear all his face paint for the match? I don't know. <laughs> what the hell it happened? Was, like, it must have been really hot in there. Almost his entire forehead was missing as if he had been wrestling like 20 minutes. You think he just got really hot in there and started scratching his head? He's like, oh, fuck. What I if he was like, just bored and he was doing that? I think he heard like all the ridiculous like singing for Mr. McMahon and he was face palming. <laughs> Maybe it was like when he gets bored, he just like picks off the paint individually. On his face or something like super or, like or that. Or maybe his receding hairline is so bad that it affects his face paint. Ah, uh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> he comes out to fucking United Champions. He's just got like a black stripe on his nose. <laughs> um, I I don't know what more there is to say about this, fellas. I mean, anything more? I mean, th- this was a really quick tease for this. I'm sure we're going to get more into Sting's intentions of why, like, you know, he gets beat by Triple H and he seemingly just seems like, okay, well, I'm good, and then appears here after SummerSlam. I think that Sting's a good promo, so I think he can deliver on um, the next upcoming weeks, and he seems like a guy they can probably bring in each week, not just for one or two dates. So I expect a half-decent build. We might even get, like, um, Sting wrestling a six-man tag on Raw or something. Oh, that'd be nice. Mm-hmm. Just to have a Raw appearance, that'd be awesome. Uh, so... It's something different. It might not deliver that well at the pay-per-view, but shit, after SummerSlam, fucking take whatever. Just don't do what you did before with Sting. Don't wait for, like, week after week and only have, go, 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 and then finally when you have, like, one more week left, then go, all right, now I'm going to talk. That was a pain (laughs) in the fucking balls when it came to WrestleMania. I'm just thinking, maybe they almost have to have him wrestle on Raw before a Night of Champions. I mean, they can't yeah. have him have all of his matches go down as a loss. Yeah, I was about to say, he has to at least get a win. Kenneth Kate in the chat room actually dropped here. They don't ever want Sting to have a win in WWE. And that's <laughs> definitely what it's looking like if that's going to be the case. I'm starting to think it is. They do have a track record of being like, fuck WCW. Do you really think like Sting just got to a point where it was like, yeah, I, better, I don't even care how my character is or if I lose all, just pay me. You, you can yeah, make me I, the most. You can make me the most expensively paid jobber of all time. Well, just think what he came from. He had that fucking like ridiculous incident with Jeff Hardy and TNA. After that, he probably felt like I can't wait for my contract to run out. Yeah, at least he's working with professionals. Yeah, I know. Fucking, at least he knows his opponent won't turn up dr- like totally drugged up. Yeah, not Seth Rollins, at least. <laughs> so, shit. I guess this is the best thing for Sting at this point, so he can finally get some validation in the later half of his career. Indeed. All right. Well, we're going to start wrapping things up here. We got one more color we're going to be taking on here. We might still take a few tweets and stuff from the chat room, though, so go ahead and drop those in there. Uh, we're taking our final color from 606. 606, who's there? Hey, what up? It's Trent. What's up, Trent? What would you think about the show tonight, dude? Ah, uh, brother. You know what? I, I'm just going to be short and sweet with it. Uh, missed opportunities and popcorn matches, to be honest. I mean, that, that's what it was. Uh, the takeaway, and like I said, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Uh, the takeaway was the Wyatt's. It was a homage to the 80s, and the WWE has progressively tried to go back and just touch upon some of the, the, the history of the sport, and, and much love to them for that. 
in lieu of having a competition to for the, force them to up their game. Uh, the fallout from tonight, uh, John Stewart. I mean, that was David Arquette all over again. Mm. I was waiting on well, Vince Russo. Hopefully, they don't give him the title. Just, uh, I don't know if they give him the title. I think he can get that Road Warrior pop. <laughs> hey, you know what? You know that might make it entertaining. But the past two nights with this whole, and then even on on the Daily Show, because I respect John Stewart until he tried to, you know, immerse himself into this this level of culture because. He's always presented himself as being above it, and then, and, and by all rights, he is. And not to take away from any intellectuals that watch wrestling, which I would be one of them, but um, it just it doesn't it doesn't vibe, and people get that, and I think that's why it fell flat, and it's still falling flat. Uh, again, it, it's David Arquette all over again, and my Vince Russo coming out and you know bending over the audience to keep it PG. So, uh, I mean that that was a fallout for me. Uh, no, the Wyatts. This was like reminiscent of uh, the Von Erichs versus the Freebirds, bringing in that surprise Terry Gordy moment, and uh, kudos. Kudos for that, and I want to see more of that than everything else that happened tonight. Uh, the other point for me specifically, mm. the women had such an opportunity, and, and really, you have to go back to Lita or to Moolah or to, to some of those that came up from the, the 50s and 60s mm -hmm. to see the level of, of skill and, and passion in the women's division. And tonight, they just crapped the bed. They absolutely crapped the bed. And then the Bellas, they got to go. What, did you <laughs> they, see TakeOver? They do everything to discourage and, and to take away from what Ric Flair's daughter and, and, and the rest are really trying to establish. Mm -hmm. Because they can, and Paige as well, uh, they can dominate. And... Where Paige made the fun tonight, we'll take on anyone, you know, be it men or women. Uh, you know what? Let's have that China moment. Let, let, let's go Ronda Rousey, you know, and, and, and let's pump it up a little bit because that would draw in the fans. That would, you know, put them in the seats. So I'd love to see that. And I think tonight, again, missed opportunity. All right, uh, that's basically it for me, brother. Well, uh, I've been asking all the callers tonight. I don't know if you saw TakeOver as well, but uh, there was three shows this weekend, TakeOver, SummerSlam, and Raw. If you had to rank them from best to worst, how would you do it? Actually, I did. Um, I actually disagree. I disagree. I, I thought SummerSlam was just abysmal. I, I really did. I think it was more predictable than tonight's uh, farce. And, you know, again, my, my highlight would be, you know, the uh, – the Wyatt moment, because that to me was what wrestling was and should continue to be because that's, it plays upon the mythos of, of, of what wrestling has been since the 19, you know, early 1900s. Um, it's just, it, it's, it's ham fisted and it's, it's just not so much, you know, it's predictable. Mm -hmm. It's watered down. It is uh, indeed. And, and, Go ahead, sorry. No, no, I was just agreeing with you. Um, but, Trent, we need to uh, get our final things in here in the show. Yeah, cool yeah, to hear yeah, you calling I'm, back I'm again. We haven't heard. Thank you for putting me on. Yeah, no problem. We haven't heard from you for a while. Always call in again, man. You have a good night. You too, man. Thanks. All right. Chat room. Lots of cool things you guys get going here going into our last bit. We still have some fun things to come for you. Don't tune out just yet. The fun continues here on MegapowersRadio.com's Raw Post Show. We have our uh, final bits that we're going to do here. The first thing, I want to start inviting the chat room there to uh, suggest any ways that you would like to hear the loser of the games tonight to read the plugs. We had a fun last week where we did it in a robotic voice. Let's see what you guys can suggest to us this week. Uh, first thing I want to do here, who said it? The way this game works is I give you guys a quote. And you guys tell me who said it. So let's see if you guys can do this one. 
Heroes are remembered, but legends never die. Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins. Nope. Tony. Stang. Chaboy. Nope. Stardust. Nope. Is it Stephanie? Nope. Was it that guy that said it? Was it JBL? Come on, Drew. I'd at least expect you to know this one. John Stewart? Chat room. Who said that quote? Heroes are remembered, but legends never die. Jackal? It's not, it was not the jackal. <laughs> he wasn't even there tonight. <laughs> Kurgan? Damn. <laughs> God, it was terrible. All right, well, I'll leave that one for the chat room to catch up on. Again, heroes are remembered, but legends never die. Who said it? A great man once said it. A great man did indeed once <laughs> said it. It was a great man. I had a movie made about him. Uh, so we're going to move on. To uh, a new game I debuted last week. New oh. game? New game? <laughs> new game. Uh, I thought this one was rather fun. I call it Tap Out. Uh, the way this game works is I'm going to give you guys a topic. And then you guys are going to go in a circle naming examples of that topic. So uh, when I give it to you, the first person to go since he won last week will be Tony. So he gets the easiest one going first. After that, we'll go to Wago. And Drew, as always, you'll be last. And then after Drew goes, it goes back to the beginning. And we keep going through. You guys get a five-second maximum to give me an answer that is an example of uh, what it is. And, uh, yeah, if you don't get it, you get eliminated. Last one standing wins. And whoever wins gets to choose whoever the loser is and who has to read that out there. Uh, All right. So the topic for this week is... As soon as I say it, Tony, you can start. Cities that have hosted SummerSlam. Go. Brooklyn, New York. That is correct. No, stop typing, Wago. Indianapolis. Well, that was actually Wago's turn. Oh, Wago. <laughs> um, they held it in LA, I think. Uh, New York City? Yeah. Sweet. Um, Way goes out, Drew. Uh, Miami. No, never did a SummerSlam in Miami. Shit. Oh. Um, looking through, it actually doesn't look like they ever did a SummerSlam in Florida at all. Oddly oh, that's enough, a, it's a missed really? opportunity right there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, here's the full list: Auburn Hills, Michigan; Boston, Massachusetts; Brooklyn, New York; Chicago, Illinois; Cleveland, Ohio; East Rutherford, New Jersey. Indianapolis, Indiana, Indiana, London, England, Los Angeles, California, Minneapolis, Minnesota, New York City, Philadelphia, Phoenix, Pittsburgh, Raleigh, North Carolina, San Jose, California, Toronto, Uniondale, New York, and Washington, D.C. Oh, that Uniondale. I was going to guess that next. <laughs> that was uh, that was that SummerSlam from Long Island in 2004. Brock and the Rock. Don't remember that. Really? Is it? No, I mean, it, it being Uniondale, I never would have fucking remembered that. It was, um, what do they call it? Was it um, Nassau Coliseum? Hmm. I was going to go silly with my next one, and then I was totally lost. Yeah, a lot of these are like Auburn Hills. Did you say that uh, Chicago? I know where Auburn Hills is. It's pretty fucking near to me. (laughs) Um, Chicago wasn't there. Um, And of course, London, England. I can't believe no one said that one. Oh, shit. I thought that would have been a go to. Um, But yeah, okay. So once again, Tony wins. Tap out. Um, so you're going to get to choose who does all of our plugs tonight between the losers, whether it's going to be Drew or Wago. Uh, I'm going to try to take one out of the chat room here. I actually already had a good one, but, uh, still a little bit of time. If you want to suggest what you guys think that they should read the plugs in tonight, something fun, go ahead and put it in there. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to do our next segment here. That is the good, the bad, and the ugly, where we talk about what the best part of the show, the worst part of the show, and the most God awful must avoid part of the show was stay tuned. Yes, it is the good, the bad, and the ugly. Fellas, very interesting raw tonight. Like to hear what you guys got to say about it. Same out to all you listeners out there. If you're in the chat room and you want to drop what your good, bad, and ugly is, go ahead and put it there and I'll read it out as we finish things up here. First, Let's head to Mr. Wago. What was your good, bad, and ugly? 
The good, the Dudley boys returning. The bad, John Stewart. The ugly, Paige's attitude on Twitter. It is your Ooh. job as a performer to make the fans chant what you want them to chant. If they're not doing it, then the uh, blame falls with you, bitch. All right. The, uh, Tony, what's your good, bad, and ugly? I actually can't decide between the three goods that I have, but I can group them all together as uh, some kind of like return slash new debuts, sort of, I guess. New uh, debut? Dudley Boys, the Big Beard McWyatt, and uh, Sting. I liked how all three of these happened. Should have happened at fucking SummerSlam, but that was really cool. Um, the bad, I am sick and tired of Lana and Summer Rae going out there, standing around whenever one of these two people, Rusev Ziggler, Ziggler's, have a match, and then catfighting every fucking week. It's the same shit. And if you're not going to have an actual match, knock it the fuck off. If you are going to have a match, you should have done it at SummerSlam. <laughs> and the ugly, I'm going to have to agree with Wego here. The whole situation with the Divas, Revolution, quote, whatever you want to call it now, and uh, Paige's attitude. You know, you look at the New Day, they weren't getting over as baby faces. They became heels. Now people are going nuts over them. Paige wants to blame the audience for not getting along with it. Eh, it's not the audience's fault that you're boring. Mm-hmm. Drew, round us out. You're good, bad, and ugly. My good well, for tonight definitely has to be the Dudley Boys. I mean, just amazing seeing them back. And maybe if I do pick up Bubba Ray this time in Fantasy League, maybe he'll actually have a match for once. My bad. My bad for the evening would definitely have to be the Divas match. It, just uh, nothing special about it. The ugly is Paige's attitude. Come on. Don't be that guy. Or girl in this case. Don't be a fucking douche. All right, my good, bad, and ugly. The good goes to Mrs. Pimpand. It's strong. Bad. Too many rematches from SummerSlam going forward out of it. No necessary. It's not necessary. You know, that that should have been an end mark for most stories. New things should have developed tonight, which they did. They got some new stuff in there, but... The new stuff? <laughs> <laughs> too, too much of that old stuff. Old stuff? With that. Old uh, stoops? The ugly... <laughs> Everything else about Ms. TV, besides Mrs. Pimpand, that was an abysmal segment. Uh, Kenneth Cade in the chat room here, the good, the return of Sting, bad, the divas, the ugly, John Stewart taking an AA. Good one there. Um, all right, fellas. Uh, one last thing before we start doing our plugs here. Who said it? Heroes are remembered, but legends never die. Chat room did not get it. Drew, I know you know the answer to this one. It's not Ryback, is it? It's not Ryback. No. Heroes are remembered, but legends never don't die. Tell me, don't tell me it's Stardust. No. I already said Stardust. Oh, you did? My bad. Heroes are remembered, but legends never die was said by Babe Ruth. <laughs> I... You I fucking totally that up. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> as soon as you said that it wasn't Seth Rollins, I'm like, oh, you're going for a Tony thing here. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Seth Rollins was, of course, quoting the great Bambino, one of his most popular quotes, or at least that's what the Sandlot taught me. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, if, exactly. I, I don't know if Babe Ruth ever actually did say that, but Sandlot he said he did. <laughs> so, should, so should we quote the Sandlot on that one? Sure. Okay. The Babe. You know, some some lady called the Babe. God, who's the babe? <laughs> she was a decent bitch, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I brought the Tony question to the who said it. Sorry, guys, it was going to happen eventually. But once I heard Seth Rollins say that, I was like, oh, yep, that's the one. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, of course, Tony, you won tap out. You get to choose who does the plugs tonight. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Drew or Wago? Uh, do we know what they're going to be doing it as? Uh, well, the... Options that I saw in there that I like the best, and I'll let you pick which one they even get to do it as, is either as Colonel Sanders, suggested was... by Ferris419, um, and I missed who it was. I think it might have been Creepas, suggested doing it in the style of a New Day promo. Oh, no, it was also Ferris419. I think I saw Ultimate Warrior, too, from somebody. Yes, Kenneth Cade said, read like the Ultimate Warrior. Hmm. <laughs> as tempting as it is for Wago to do an Ultimate Warrior... I gotta see is, I actually, I've actually done Ultimate Warrior before on the Indies <laughs> as the Ultimate Wago for a gag match. Nice. <laughs> the Ultimate Wago. 
as tempting as it is, I got to see the train wreck that's coming our way with Drew doing a new day. <laughs> All right. You heard it there, folks. That is how we're doing our plugs tonight. Drew, you know majority of what we do here. I mean, you like to impersonate Tony doing his plugs and everything. So this time, you get to impersonate the New Day, plugging all of our stuff. Drew, tell the world what we need them to hear. It's a new day. Yes, it is. And the, pos- and the power of positivity comes from Stephen Wago with a PH, not this V crap that they try to spill to you. It's PH. Go to stephenwago.com. It'd be easier if I could actually fucking dance and do this at the same time, but I can't. Well, as a matter of fact, they said you had to dance while you're doing it. Oh, let me. The chat room did request this. Okay, let me let me uh, get do a fish. Get let me get up here. <laughs> All right. Okay. Anyways. Don't be a, a sour because <laughs> <laughs> Don't be sour like Tony Mango. Go to smartgoutmoment.com. Fanboysanonymous.com. Go to those places for all your nerd-like things. This is far from anything new they related, by the way. I don't know if anyone's picked that up yet. So, yeah. I don't have anything I can't plug anything as well. This is a trade wreck, Tony. I fucking hate you so much. (laughs) (laughs) You know, Drew, I'm disappointed that you totally missed. Oh, don't you dare be sour. Stay tuned to Mega Mega Power. I was hoping for that one, too. (laughs) (laughs) I was hoping for that one, too. Oh, my God. Ah. (laughs) All right, folks. If you enjoyed that mess and everything else we had going on tonight, join us every Monday following Raw. Megapowersradio.com is the place to be for the most interactive post-Raw experience available. We are available all places. Podcasts can be found as well. iTunes, Stitcher Radio, YouTube, TuneIn Radio. And for easy links for all those, head to SmartOutMoment.com, which you can also find lots of other cool wrestling content, including news, roster hierarchies, rumors and scuttlebutt, reviews of almost every single show that's on TV at this point good place to be uh it's just as this is a good place to be here on megapowersradio.com and if you do think it is a good place to be support us by going to patreon.com slash megapowersradio for where as little as one dollar you can keep all these cool shows coming and enjoying this place to be we're just about out of time here folks though we got all the plugs in we got all of our info out there so we are going to be wrapping things up from the raw post show here at mega powers radio for steven wago for drew white for tony mango my name is mike payton this has been the raw post show and we'll catch y'all on the flip-flop <laughs>